Okay, like I said, I'm doing a shorter version of this, but so you've done your three rows. It's going to hang down a little more than what I have on here. Like I said, I'm doing the speedy version because to show you the whole thing would take a while, and I'm actually not planning on doing another fingerless glove in this color. But say you've already got your three rows done, so write that down. If you decide to do the chunky knit at the beginning, get a little piece of paper and write three rows chunky knit. Now you're going to change color, which means all you have to do, because I know this has been a question um, that people have had about making the color change seamlessly, and as you can see on this one, it does change pretty seamlessly. It doesn't really affect it. It looks really, you know, pretty good. And all I do to do that is I cut, I cut a strand off here, maybe a couple inches. Okay, so that's cut off, so you got your little tail. And then all I do is I grab the other color that I want to use. Of course, if I wasn't using green on green, it'd be a lot easier. And you're just going to, all I do is I tie those two together. I know there's another method, but this is just the one that a friend of mine told me about, Sarah, when she does the regular knitting, that she prefers to tie it just to make sure it's more secure. Now you have all your little tails. You can trim these. They don't have to be that long. So you can just kind of give them a little trim on each side if you want. Or you can keep them long and just work them into the project, which means you're going to grab all of them and treat them as one. Now comes the long part. And definitely, if you have a row counter or some other way to keep track of how many rows you've done, you're going to do 50 rows of the tight knit stitch, which is taking, <clears throat> excuse me, taking one loop over two loops. And you're going to do that for 50 rows. So all you're going to do is you've already got one row on there already. So you're going to go around and it's only going to be three rows on it to do this chunky knit, or tight stitch. Sorry. So again, on your piece of paper or whatever, write down that now you're going to do 50 rows uh, of tight knit. I'm just going to show you once and then we'll move on. I'll tell you what the next step is after that. So once you get your three on there, which I have, you're just going to take the bottom loop up over the top, basically, because it's a one over two stitch, so the bottom over the top, all the way around, once you get them all wrapped. If it helps, do it one at a time. That doesn't matter as long as you get around there. Okay, so what, like I said, 50 rows of the tight knit stitch, and then we move on to making the actual thumb hole. And I'm just getting this caught up to where we are, and then I'll show you how you do the thumb hole. I tried to come up with as simple of an idea for a fingerless glove as I could for myself, just because I guess I like to try to make things as simple as possible when I'm knitting. Okay, so let's see. I'm just taking the bottom one over the top two. So it's going to end up looking on this, this side. we got two strands still. So that way every time you go around, you're just taking the bottom one over the top two. And that's your tight stitch. And that helps create those ridges that you saw on the fingerless glove that I did make. Okay, so go ahead and do 50 rows. I know I'm repeating myself a lot, but believe me, it took me a lot to figure out. So think about it this way. You're first starting with three rows of chunky knit if you choose, in whatever color you choose. Then you're going to do 50 rows of the tight knit stitch if that's the stitch you want to use. That creates a very snug fit and that's what I like. I lost my loom. Okay, so now I'm going to assume that you have the 50 stitches, which if this was still on the loom would get you about down to here. Because here is the opening that we're about ready to create. That's the opening right there. So, you've done your 50 rows. Now you're like, okay, now how do I make the hole? This is so weird. Okay, you have your clips on here. First thing you're going to do is move these two, and there's going to be two loops on them, over to this peg, or whichever peg you started with, and then knit two over two, basically. So you still have two on it. So I take these two, and you may have to, um, let me see, you may have to move one loop at a time. I've had to do that before, and sometimes it looks like two uh, on the loop, I call it. Okay. So you're taking the two loops off one of the clips. Doesn't matter really which one. I just tend to like to do the one closer to where I started with. Okay. Oops, not quite all on there. Alright. 
So you're going to have basically four loops. We'll take the bottom two this time over top of that peg. Okay. And what that's going to do is since there's no pegs here, it's going to create the opening for your thumb to go through. And now you're going to do still do the tight knit stitch for 10 rows. That's how many rows I seem to work for my size thumb. So that's what you're going to do. You do 10 rows of that. Now what I'm going to assume is that you already have those 10 rows done. And all you're doing with the 10 rows there, excuse me, is you're just going like a U. You're working your way back and forth. So when you go this way around, there's one row. Back the other way, it's two rows. Back this way, three. Back that way, four. Which means sometimes the first, like this peg, will have two on it right now. The rest going around will have three so you can knit over. Then you work your way back through and you do the same thing. So you do that for 10 rows. And now what you're gonna do is you, you wanna close off the thumb hole. So now what you do is you go all the way around the loom again. So I'm assuming you've already done the thumb hole. So you're just gonna go all the way around. And what you're gonna notice is that it takes a little while to knit over that new, uh, excuse me, that peg again. Because what you're gonna do Okay, I went around once, so there's only one loop, but I knit over all the other loops because they have the three that I need. So you do not wrap or do not knit over the purple peg until you have three loops on it, and then do your one over two. And that closes off the thumb hole. so that it's just the opening again for your thumb. Like I said, you do not knit over on that purple loom, excuse me, until there's three strands on it. Otherwise, it won't, it just won't be as consistent. So now you're thinking, okay, what do I do now? Once you get that thumb hole cut, uh, closed off, you're now going to do, if you choose, 12 rows of the tight stitch again. So I'm going to put this aside because we really don't need that anymore since I've told you all the steps. So let's review. 3 in the chunky knit, if that's what you choose to do at the beginning. 50 in the tight knit. Then 10 to create, 10 by moving the one, uh, excuse me, yarn off the one peg onto the other to create your opening. Then you're going to do, once you start closing back off, 12 rows of the tight stitch again. And that's going to close off the thumb hole so your thumb will fit through it nicely. And then it will also, <clears throat> excuse me, be enough room for your hand. Then what I did to end it is I decided to end it with three rows of the chunky knit again. And then I casted it off, putting two chains in between each peg. I said I forgot to bring my crochet hook in. Lifting off it because, okay, let me back up. The reason I like to switch back to the chunky knit at the very end, for me, is because it'll only make there be one loop on each peg, which is easier to cast off with a crochet hook. So keep that in mind. Um, otherwise you're dealing with two loops on there because of the tight knit, and I didn't want to deal with that. So that's why I did a chunky knit, and it just gives a little different, I probably should have did a different color, so go ahead if you want, and even when you hit the, the three rows of the chunky, Go back to using your other color if you want, and then it'll be more noticeable of what you did here. Um, but I like doing the chunky knit because it'll leave one, excuse me, one loop on each peg, so that when I'm ready to take this off, doing the crochet hooks and hoop or loops in between, it's easier. So if you've seen my video on how I do the crochet in between to take to bind off like a hat or um, even the rectangle loom, I think I've done something like that go ahead and look at that but it's pretty simple to make this it's just a, a numbers game um, so one more time I'll review if you've got your piece of paper ready three of the chunky 50 of the tight knit <clears throat> excuse me 10 rows minusing a peg to create the thumb hole 12 close knit again the tight knit and three of the chunky and then cast it off using the crochet method picking up a loop making your two crochet loops before you pick up the next one and then bring it the back to the front 
if you've watched my other videos, you know what I'm talking about. If not, go check them out. Um, the headband video will be a good one to watch because that pretty much is a circle loom. But that's what I love about these clips, um, for the fact that they can change it up. You can increase and decrease by moving these, too, which makes it kind of cool. So that's why I picked them up one time. But that's how I made the fingerless gloves. I hope you understood the steps. Any questions, just leave a question below the video and I will try my best to answer it. Thanks.